For millennia, people have been fascinated by the moon, that celestial body which sometimes brightly illuminates the entire night and then slowly disappears into complete darkness. For science, the moon has only recently returned to focus. Discoveries of rare resources and water show us that the moon is quite different than we previously thought. But what does this mean for us practically? Will people soon regularly fly to the moon? And what will we discover there? The American astrophysicist and futurist, Dr. Michio Kaku, provides commentary on the latest developments for us. Join us now on this fascinating journey to the moon and get ready for completely new impressions and perspectives. People are flying to the moon again. It's strange that no human has returned to the moon since 1972. The Apollo 11 mission in 1969 was extraordinary. Billions of people watched on their television screens as humans set their feet on the dusty lunar surface for the first time. Apollo 27 was the last manned flight to the moon. 1972 was so long ago that many of us weren't even born when these historic events took place. Renowned scientist Michio Kaku recently mentioned that apparently the Chinese are currently the only ones taking it seriously and will soon land on the moon. China has taken a remarkable step by sending a robotic spacecraft to collect rock samples from the lunar surface. This development marked a massive shift in lunar exploration. Michio Kaku congratulated China on this remarkable achievement and emphasized that the Middle Kingdom is now the third country to accomplish this feat after the United States and the Soviet Union. At the same time, the scientist also considers that it could lead to a new space race. During the time of the Apollo missions, the USA and the former Soviet Union engaged in a fierce competition. Now, more and more nations are venturing into space, and Michio Kaku warns strongly that this could lead to tensions, especially when it is no longer just about the exploration of celestial bodies like the Moon. Soon, the commercial and economic component could come into play and trigger conflicts. If China takes the lead on the Moon, it could lead to envy especially if their discoveries give them a significant advantage. Suddenly, we're confronted with questions like who actually owns the moon and who has the right to extract resources on a large scale from there. Kaku finds it regrettable that we have to consider military aspects of space travel and views to current developments with both concern and joy. Global Development or Tough Competition the United States has been at the forefront of space exploration in recent decades. After the end of the Soviet Union and significant economic problems, Russia is slowly reappearing on the scene. The USA also controls over half of the Earth's satellites, and a man named Elon Musk is currently launching thousands of mini-satellites into space to blanket the globe with a comprehensive communication network. Many nations have placed satellites in space. They serve for communication, weather observation, and other purposes. However, no one has yet considered who owns the space around the Earth and who possesses rights there. The amount of satellites and space debris is becoming worrisome. Latecomer nations may feel disadvantaged if there is no space left for their own satellites. The USA has established the United Space Force, a military unit specially focused on space defense to protect its values in space. The future will show whether such a protection unit and military presence in space will be necessary in the future. So far, the return to the moon has been more like a peaceful competition between two private space companies. Elon Musk, with his space company SpaceX, has long announced plans to fly to the moon and even set up a hotel there. Musk's intentions regarding the moon are focused on tourism and manned flights. Jeff Bezos, another visionary entrepreneur, and Moon Enthusiast sees the Moon as a future economic standpoint. The Amazon CEO would prefer to relocate the entire heavy industry from Earth to the Moon to give our planet some relief. Bezos's vision could now be fulfilled faster than anyone had thought, as the latest discoveries make it increasingly likely that humans will soon mine resources on the Moon. Musk and Bezos have been laughed at or envied in the past. However, Nobody apparently saw them as a threat to space or a trigger for international conflicts. China's moon missions will definitely have military implications, warns Kaku, especially if the USA or Russia cannot keep up initially. 
Michio Kaku is now also concerned about an unnecessary arms race in space. Already, the USA and Russia are reportedly testing hypersonic drones capable of space deployment. Will the discovery of water change everything? China's lander, Chang'e 5, landed on the lunar surface in 2020, drilled deep into it, collected a rock sample, and sent it back to Earth in a breathtaking mission. With this, China has carried out a project that has astonished everyone. Chang'e 5's achievement has sparked a wave of curiosity and anticipation among international scientists regarding the implications of this new discovery. Never before have humans held rock samples from the depths of the moon in their own hands. Only a handful of rocks returned to Earth, but they were remarkable. Using state-of-the-art techniques, such as field emission scanning electron microscopy, electron probe microanalysis, and Raymond spectroscopy, Chinese experts examined the sample. It was revealed that tiny glass beads are present in the lunar soil, and these beads contain a small amount of water. In total, Chinese researchers concluded that the entire lunar soil could be permeated by these glass beads. If that's the case, there could be several million liters of water trapped in glass on the moon. The view that the moon is dry and boring is now definitely a thing of the past. Michio Kaku referred to the published study as a significant contribution to our ever-growing knowledge of lunar water. He emphasized that this newfound understanding holds great importance for future explorations of the lunar surface. Kaku also refers to upcoming missions already planned by the USA. The Artemis project aims to take humans to the moon and establish the first permanent station on the lunar surface. With the presence of water, this step would become much easier for humanity. The water bound in the glass beads can be made usable through heating. Moon settlers would have an abundant supply of utility water, drinking water, water for lunar plant cultivation, and even fuel. In addition to these practical aspects, this unusual discovery enhances our understanding of water reservoirs on other celestial bodies. Just 20 years ago, scientists considered it impossible for there to be water on planets or moons that lacked an atmosphere. Normally, water would either evaporate or escape into space in such cases. However, on the moon, water seems to have found a completely different form. The discovery of water on the moon is not entirely new, though. Orbiters and telescopes have already suspected large amounts of ice in craters of the polar region. The NASA Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program plans to send a rover to search for water near the South Pole by the end of 2023. Now, it's quite possible that NASA will expand its mission and also want to return soil samples to Earth. The Sophia Mission in the Clavius Crater We owe the discovery of water molecules on the Moon among other things, to NASA's airborne observatory, SOFIA. The joint project with the ESA regularly carried a more than 17,000 kilogram, 2.5 meter diameter telescope aboard a Boeing 747 into the Earth's stratosphere. Undisturbed by Earth's radiation and atmospheric dust, the flying infrared observatory scanned various celestial bodies, including the Moon, and found evidence of water ice at the poles. Since development began in 1996, unique technical ingenuity was required for SOFIA. The Boeing 747 SP jetliner had to be equipped with a kind of garage door that opened in the stratosphere, allowing the telescope to have a clear view of space. SOFIA was able to detect water molecules in the area of the Clavius Crater on the southern hemisphere of the Moon with certainty. The Clavius Crater is the second largest prominent lunar feature visible from Earth. With an impressive size of 231 kilometers in width and a depth of 3.5 kilometers, the crater is now a silent witness to the moon's eventful past. Embedded within the boundaries of this gigantic crater are very likely additional large water deposits. Once again, we must completely revise our perception of the moon as dry and boring. Helium-3 from the moon now let's talk about the previously announced resource that could trigger a race for the moon. The new mineral, called Changiite Y, could completely change the energy industry on Earth in the future. Changiite Y is a unique crystal belonging to the bryolith subgroup and chemically associated with phosphate merylite. 
What truly makes this crystal extraordinary is its high content of helium-3. This rare element has the ability for nuclear fusion, the type of energy that physicists have been searching for decades with moderate success. The main challenge so far has been the lack of suitable fuel to generate more energy from fusion reactions than is needed to initiate the reaction. The enhanced fusion readiness of helium-3 has been known for a long time, but this resource is so scarce on Earth that it was never considered as an energy source. Helium-3 from the Moon, however, now has the potential to revolutionize our energy needs through the utilization of advanced nuclear fusion reactors, as explained by Michio Kaku. However, the visionary futurist also warns of a catch. To bring helium-3 from the Moon to Earth and organize the entire mining operation on the Moon, massive investments would be necessary. And it remains uncertain when and if the use of this resource would be economically viable. Michio Kaku believes that nuclear fusion with helium-3, unlike conventional nuclear processes, offers a safer and cleaner source of energy that produces only minimal radiation and no nuclear waste. He strongly recommends further research and sees the discovery as a very positive development overall. The potential of helium-3 is enormous. Just 25 tons of this element would be sufficient to supply the entire U.S. with energy for one year. With an estimated value of about 3 billion U.S. dollars per ton, the moon could become a fiercely contested treasure trove. The pursuit of utilizing helium-3 has already triggered a global race, with both private companies and countries with space agencies working on projects to harness the resource. Will these discoveries ultimately harm the moon in the long run? Or could they mean the salvation of our planet?